I would like to introduce myself and my report today. Uh, my name is uh, Lee Kwan Ha. I'm doing a DBI for Blackberry Company in Ontario. So Blackberry Company is selling uh, cloud service for different kinds of database, including uh, Postgres, Oracle, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, and Cassandra. So we have around uh, over 3,000 software and uh, working on around 800 uh, staff of computer and IT. Uh, 800 above total of 5,000 uh, are doing computer and IT, in which around uh, 80 staff, 10% uh, doing database. Um, with uh, other people doing uh, cloud service, uh, networking service, assurance, uh, and uh, so on. Storage, yes, storage supplies. So um, I'm working on a, a database administrator of Postgres, and uh, we have a plan that we will uh, move uh, the mainly the software into Postgres. So uh, uh, around a few thousand software of BlackBerry on the cloud will be uh, changing to use Postgres. Uh, within uh, this year and next year. Because uh, like uh, uh, since the whole last year, we're moving only a few tests, everything. And my work uh, mainly about this report to create the uh, image for Postgres to sell on the cloud for the BlackBerry cloud service. So about the report, um, I would like to uh, uh, present our uh, models our implementation, our performance uh, testing, and the conclusion. So uh, we have been developed for a few years the first cluster called Keep Align Rep Manager. It is the uh, same containment uh, on the software on Postgres database of BlackBerry for a few years. And we are testing the HSA proxy and PC browser to print the Postgres image into production. So this is the uh, model of uh, Keep Alive and Rep Manager that we have been using for the past few years that uh, we use uh, replication by uh, uh, Rep Manager, an open source tool of Postgres uh, to do master and standby, including host standby and asynchronous standby. With, uh, with next to uh, avoid the, the split, uh, the split uh, plan errors that uh, sometimes uh, the, the with next will uh, choose the more privileged standby to promote on failover. So because keep alive is installed on this cluster, the requirement of keep alive will require that the subnet of the whole cluster should be in the same subnet, same containment. It means that we will not be able to cross zone with this model. So uh, let's say on failover, where the master fail, the Kifalai will switch the, the IP to the host standby. And uh, the Kifalai on the master will uh, notify uh, master script to uh, promote the host standby to be the new master. For we come to check and try to create the image for HSA proxy PC browser, and uh, we will discuss that uh, which solution we choose to create this image for Postgres. We use HSA proxy like a high availability proxy uh, for load balancer. And we use PG Pulser, a new version of Postgres to do connection puller. Uh, it is more compact than the previous version PG pool. So it requires a lower memory than PG pool. Um, on our design, the front end servers are inside the same subnet, but the cross containment, it means cross cloud zones, can happen with the back end that the back-end server can be in different subnets. 
and uh, we have the load balancing installed uh, that uh, the workload will be uh, distributed uh, to all three of the master and standby databases. This is the model. So on this model, we see very clear that on the front end, there is keep alive. And because of keep alive requirement, that the HSA proxy 1 and the HSA proxy 2 will be in the same subnet. But the load balancer, VG Pulsar here, the back end can be in different subnets. So in order to uh, be in, compare, in compare between uh, PC Pulsar and PC Poon, we see that PC Poon can uh, distinguish uh, which one is the current master of the cluster. And PC Pulsar, uh, we, we cannot do that with PC Pulsar. For PC Pulsar, we have to make health check. And the HSA proxy will use uh, Telnet and HTTP curl to uh, health check each uh, backend server and return the code that this server is writable or this server is read only. By that way, we can share the workload uh, in any case and load balancing happen, even fail over happen, or even any of the server fail, uh, then it detect right away by health check and continue the load balancing transparently without any error to the software. So for our implementation of this model, we would like to uh, uh, explain our uh, development of uh, Keep Alive and Rev Manager first for the past few years. And then we try to report our research on HSA proxy PC Pulsar, including how the read request on load balancing, how the write request uh, by using uh, POC splitting of HSA proxy to distinguish between the read and the write for PC Pulsar. And then the statistic report on HSA proxy, the two kinds of failover with HSA proxy, the, fail, the farm failover and the auto failover. Then we would like to go into details of implementation of the front end cluster and the back end cluster and how to install a share with next and we switch it back. So at the end of this uh, uh, part, we will come to the approach of uh, how to uh, create our uh, auto image for Postgres on cross containment. So for Keep Alive, uh, we, uh, we develop uh, BlackBerry Cloud including 20 network zones in which uh, there are 16 productions, uh, two laboratory zones and two restrict zones. Uh, we develop, uh, this is called Saturn Ring Software, a software uh, uh, try to uh, store information about the storage request of customer. Uh, this customer requests how many storage, how many device we store inside the Saturn Ring Software. So on each zone, each cloud zone, we need to run a version of Saturn Ring to know uh, on this zone, which customer, how many storage they are uh, required. So these 15 zones are low bone. It means uh, uh, half of them will be uh, located all over the Canada and the United States. Uh, a few located in Germany and Amsterdam, and a few located in Singapore, India, and Hong Kong. So it means that uh, uh, the, the, the customer all over the world can, uh, uh, can have quick access from our service. So this is our implementation of our HSA proxy and PC Pulsar. Uh, on this one, we see that on the front end, we only install on HSA proxy 1 and HSA proxy 2 the keep alive to create a version IP, and then the HSA proxy here for uh, forwarding, forwarding to the back end and load, balan load balancing. On the back end, we have PC Pulsar, Postgres, Rep Manager to uh, 
control the fare over. And then Rev Manager, D, this is the watching dot service of uh, Rev Manager. And uh, to, to, uh, and the sweet neck here, we don't have PC browser. Uh, on the wit next, the database is empty because we don't need data on the wit next. And we don't hope that the wit next uh, can be the master. So we don't put any data here. And the replication here through the log sent from master to standby. So at the first observation, we see that the tune, the tunes installed on the front end and the tune installed on the back end. There are totally two different sets of uh, components. So the first question is, currently maybe many one will only use one image to do all of six virtual machines here. So is it good? We need to test it. Ah, uh, because this one is has a proxy keep alive, no Postgres. This one is Postgres, PG Pulsar, and Red Manager. Will we come to two different images? That the front end image and the back end image should be two different. So um, we can tell that we test it. Uh, we use uh, Open Nebula to create the version uh, machine. And then the first step, we use only one image, like a lot of place, and we use the Open Nebula contest script to uh, detect if this is the front end. We uh, remove the Postgres, Red Manager, and PG Pulsar. If this is the back end, we remove the HSA proxy and keep a line. The first thing we detect that it runs slow. Because uh, when you create the VM, there are different VMs you use one image, it will run slow. When you create the VM, you stay there and wait for a while. So it's not good. And then we come to uh, <clears throat> try to make two images. The first image only contain HSA proxy keep alive. The second contain only Postgres, Rev Manager, Rev Manager D, and PC Pulsar. When we use two different images, we see that the time we create the VM only one third of the first approach, only less than, uh, let's say, uh, around five six seconds, we have a new front end server right away, and after less than ten seconds, we have right away a back end server. So it means that. Uh, we, we don't know which one can be better because uh, if you do scaling, if you do scaling, you manage two images at the same time, maybe more work, more difficult. But then the quicker time is obviously one third of the, uh, one third, only one third if you use uh, for, time, for timing, if you use the, the two different images. So we tend to uh, develop two different images and we try to develop like we will uh, uh, try to manage more work to have the cloud solution maybe better, maybe better. <clears throat> so this is how the uh, uh, load balancing happen. Suppose uh, we have the keep alive IP on the HSA proxy one and HSA proxy one, we listen on the port. This can be any port, but I just put 6432, but you can change it in your setting. So with application send a read request. Uh, when HSA proxy receive it, it will be uh, distributed into three loads. So the read, uh, we test, uh, it is load balancing. We, uh, <coughs> okay, this is how the write. We use the different port, split in the port to distinguish between the reads and the write for PC Pulsar. Uh, for the own version PC Poon, we don't need to do the port splitting because PC Poon have declaration inside the setting for the master. 
So <clears throat> if we send the right request into a different port, it sends straightly to the PC parser on the master. PC parser then forward the right request to the database of the master and write it down. After that, the master send logs to sync the host standby and the async standby. So uh, uh, we have the, the uh, box splitting for HSA proxy. Hold on, I, I would like to, to, oh sorry, I need to go back. So how can we do this? We combine this with the health check to know which is a current master. The health check um, set in by CNETD, by CNETD will check, uh, will send uh, uh, an SQL statement to the current database to see if it is a writable database. And from the uh, front end here, it uses uh, Telnet and HTTP curl protocols to, to check the health check on here and know which one is the current master to write on. So in case this is the current master, the health check will detect and the writing will come to here. Then we can do monitor by statistics code reports of HSA proxy. This is the setting. We set the user admin with the same password admin to look at this. And on this, we can also verify the load balancing and everything. Uh, we put the link here. Now, uh, we would like to come to testing the two kinds of failover of HSA proxy. The first one called farm failover. Failover means that when this master gone, the host standby will be promoted to be the new master. Uh, the question usually for beginner like this, but important because if you set up a wrong image or Postgres, can the asynchronous standby here be promoted to be master? The answer is should not, should not. And then, uh, So on read request, the happen is the load balancing will share into two uh, back end here only. And this fail server will not generate any errors back for the front end and then back to the software. So we have the read now. This is coming to PC Pulsar on the back end. And then forward to the Postgres port 5432, and then load balancing. So HSA proxy uh, set it by uh, doing uh, back end cluster. So there will be the current back end cluster that do a check. If the current uh, back end cluster on PC Pulsar check and saw is uh, not all right, then it's good to the backup, back end cluster and do the reading, avoiding the fail server here. For auto failover, so suppose we have many standby, we don't know which one is going to be the master. So the auto failover attached to the uh, uh, health check and the write request more than the read request because for the read request, we only have check on port uh, 5432 uh, Postgres and that uh, check can be uh, no need to write any script. You can plus indirectly in HSA proxy. But for write, we need to send a uh, SQL statement to make sure that that server is writable. So for auto fail over, we use health check here check which one is a writable 
server currently. And then we write to the correct server. That is a new promoted master after failover. Then uh, the host standby send log file to the ASIN. Um, the log files are sent between Postgres server to make sure that all the database on the tie the same. So uh, when you create Postgres image, uh, suppose that we had to test everything. Uh, even the send log, he had to test. Uh, so uh, currently, the question is, if you set the one log uh, folder size, uh, how much will be the best parameter? Let's say uh, I have plenty of storage. I put the uh, PC uh, one folder 40 gigabytes, and then I say by that way, I can receive up to 36 gigabytes of log file. And then uh, by that way, then I have huge cap uh, capability, and I, I uh, will be strong, so I can set uh, PC uh, one log uh, parameter is around 2,000 by my calculation using uh, formulas of uh, log file size that you can find from Postgres homepage. And then we go to test it on a real Postgres image. What happened? First 10 day, very good. One more week, very good. The third week, why is our cluster frozen? We open it and saw the IOPS reach very high. Why we get very high IOPS? because we believe that we are very strong. We set up now, we start in the system uh, nearly 40 gigabytes of log file, and any time one log file create into the same folder is very slow, and when it send log file from the master to the standby, it became very slow because it accessing to a folder of 40 gigabytes of log files together. So then, if that put into a real application, what will happen? The thing is, after a few weeks, application will start to have issue when the database becomes slow. And you know the PC is locked. Uh, to, clean, to clean it, you clean manually. Difficulty. So currently, on a real-time application, I would prefer to set the uh, lock file size. Uh, PC is locked. Number is 500 only. And then, in order to have the real time every two minutes, I can have a backup that whenever crash happen, I can recover uh, every two minutes of uh, data. So I use snapshot and combine to a small number that will guarantee the speed of the application on our Postgres image. So now we go to the details of the uh, front-end cluster implementation. We use Keep Alive. Uh, this, if, if the HSA proxy one fail, it doesn't matter. This one only one, two seconds to switch the VIP here because the server here, no data on the front-end. By default, the master will keep the version IP. So uh, the keep alive, they are setting inside keep alive to speed up the, the switching IP of the master, uh, the master in the backup here. For back end, we install PC Pulsar uh, to do connection puller. So when we put in the image PC Pulsar, we test. We test to make sure that with and without PC Pulsar, is it PC Pulsar will improve the performance of the back end? And we see that yes, PC Pulsar improve. So if some people ask a, a naive question like this, I threw away the PC Pulsar. Then I just go one step directly into the database. I don't need PC Pulsar, and I suppose I go that way, it will be quicker. 
Because if you go PG power set and then you fall wood, it will be slower. So that question is not right in the, the belief that PG power set, uh, we test and see the improvement in performance that uh, the cluster running smoother, everything becomes smoother because the connection can be managed by PG power set. For the witness, so we, we suppose that uh, a witness can store many cluster inside and control failover for many cluster. So we, at first, we still had the HSA proxy PC power cross containment here, that you see the cross containment here, the subnet is 4918. Here is different subnet 122.183. So we, we have the witness here is a shared one. And then suppose we connect it to a second, same containment, keep a live ref manager. Okay, so which way will be the best way to create the shared witness? Um, that also we made a lot of tests to make sure our image will run smoothly automatically have a witness with an empty database. So uh, we um, currently our image uh, is on Postgres version 9.4.6 and uh, inside version 9.4.6, this rep manager config file will be priority is equal to zero. The new version of Postgres said this must be at least zero. But before that, this is minus one. And the minus one or the zero to avoid that the uh, red manager have no choice and decide to uh, switch the witness to become a new master. This one to avoid the witness to become new master. So we, inside the witness, we put the first red manager config file to manage the HSA proxy and PG Pulsar. And then this is inside the first folder, main folder. Then we put the second uh, rep manager config file in the keep alive rep manager in the main folder, rep manager with next folder to uh, have the second different files. So on the with next we have two different files of setting for uh, two uh, different clusters. And then to create, we use the statement rep manager with next create. Then the first statement we pass in, this is the master for the HSA proxy PG Pulsar cluster. The second, we pass in the IP for the master of Keep Alive and uh, rep manager. Then we pass in on the first statement, the rep manager config file for the HSA proxy PG Pulsar, and we pass in the second file for the uh, Keep Alive Rep Manager, and this will create a share with next. Then on the same share with next, we use Rep manage, Rep Manager cluster show statement to show the two cluster on one server. We pass in, in two different uh, the first, the first config file of the HSA proxy PG Pulsar, and we output the current backend of the HSA proxy PG Pulsar 18.183.19. And then we pass in the second config file of the Keep Alive Rep Manager, and we show the second cluster of 187.188.189. And from the two, we see the share with next. Same with next 191, 191. So how to do back? This is the pawn. If we try to develop our image into uh, scaling, let's say if we scale uh, horizontally, then scale up can uh, uh, get the error like uh, once we try to scale up, for example, at that time, our image file suddenly inaccessible, cannot access it. 
then the VM create into an empty, serve, empty standby. And when the load balancing happen into an empty standby, it return in one night 100 errors back to the application of customer. So uh, this is related. And then uh, if we do uh, scaling uh, uh, vertically, then the config of the scale down, let when we add more RAM, when we add more hard disk, it's easy to add. But when you delete, it, it's difficult. Because suddenly a server running, you delete its RAM, will it stop? So it means that uh, uh, we, we, we also test this one for the, the ability of scaling. So the step to switch back for HSA proxy and PC browser, uh, we support the master has been failed for a while. So at first, when we after we start it on, we have to reclone to get the data up to date. Then we start service, and we had to follow the new master from, from the failed one to make sure that on the cluster, always at one time, only one master. So the failed master is now restarted at a new standby. Then, uh, we come to the next step that we had to return the cluster as it is, as it was. That the master should be the master again, and the standby, the promoting standby, uh, need restarting back to standby. So we stop service on the promoted master, that is the host standby. We promote the host standby, sorry, we promote the failed master back to master. And at this point, we have one master, that is the master is back. Then we clone the host standby to the master because the host standby now need to come back at a standby. So it requires a clone statement. A clone statement will say that this host standby is a read-only database. So we start service on host standby, and we follow the master. Now, the cluster becomes uh, as it was. The master uh, fix, uh, switch back, and the standby return a standby. Uh, if you have any other standbys, we will also need to do a rep manager follow. So this is different. After a lot of changing status of the whole cluster, we, on the front end cluster, I uh, will do a restart HSA proxy service. When we restart HSA proxy service, that we will uh, ensure that the load balancing will be smoothly within the next week. Because a lot of changing starters restart on the back end, then when we restart HSA proxy on the front end, that the whole cluster will be refreshed, and for the whole next week, load balancing will be very smooth. So now, uh, we now come to the decision. Uh, now we have two image. Indeed, uh, one image for the keep alive rep manager, and two image, front end image and back end image for HSA proxy PC browser. So uh, currently we have uh, uh, 100 software on the keep alive rep manager, and we haven't got any of them on HSA proxy and PC browser yet. So we are comparing comparison to verify that which one is a better one, which one is more reliable, like that. And we do uh, uh, checking the throughput, the input output, the CPU of each kind of cluster to compare. We do this by, uh, I would like to report here the J meter, but we also have the uh, PC bench that generate very similar CPU and uh, input output to j -Meter. And then we also use uh, Guali host and uh, Rafana dashboard that the result CPU observation, everything very similar. Uh, so we, we show here the j -Meter, that we use uh, j -Meter formulas. Throughput is the number of transactions per second. 
and the k pi per second is a throughput multiplied by average price divided by 1024. You can find these formulas back from Apache uh, home base. You search for y and then you will see uh, it, it, it doesn't state it's into a formula, but it's, it say one line like this. The throughput is the real number of transactions over the real execution time. And then with a little bit test, you know that here is in seconds. Yeah, you, you can find all of these two on Apache home base. So uh, on JMeta, we do HTTP request, uh, do test for read only, simple write and read write. For read only, we do without data execution loop for uh, and with uh, each uh, row execution. For simple write, you uh, distinguish between inserts and updates and delete. Why we need to distinguish between insert and update and delete? Why we don't have simple write with insert, update, and delete together? At first, I borrowed this idea from PG Bench. I saw that why PG Bench? When we test, we saw two cases. Why we don't use one case? And we discovered that the delete throughput uh, it is much higher than the insert and update. It means the statement nature are too different. The number of transactions per second will be very different for insert update uh, in compared to delete. So I agree with PG Bench that we should uh, divide into two cases for write. Uh, so, because if you combine two very different like this, then the result is depend. Sometimes throughput high, sometimes throughput low. And finally, you discover that the insert update get throughput totally different to delete. And you have different test result if you combine it together. You, you expect to get same result anytime you test. Okay, so, because of that, the read write also has select insert update case and select delete case. For each test in this, we measure the throughput, the CPU, the thread, the response time, the byte throughput, the response time percentage, and the response time over thread, the transition throughput over thread. So we have all together for JMeter, PC Bench. Uh, Rafana dashboard Wally host, we have around 200 jacks, but we show here, maybe we show to you 20. 20 and only J meta because they're very similar. Uh, another one looks a little bit better than uh, the rest, but uh, only need one of them, it's enough. So this is the throughput we measure on 1 million tests the size of test database is 7 million samples. And we run 1 million requests on uh, 7 million samples database. And then we have uh, the throughput. Lowest is 1,000. Highest is 2,100. So we have the throughput like this. Then. This is the throughput transaction per second of Kipalai Rev Manager. This is the CPU of the Kipalai Rev Manager. This CPU show only the master. So then Kipalai and Rev Manager will not offer load balancing because the 10 to 20 percentage here of the standbys only show that the logs files send communicate with the master. This is only for log file sending. No real read write here, so load balancing is not offered by Keep Line Rev Manager. This is thread chart of Keep Line Rev Manager. After one minute of test, the number of active threads is 100, and then nearly uh, six minutes, it randomly drops until the test of one million tests done. This is the response time check of Keep Alive Ref Manager. This is the bias throughput over time. This is the response time percentage of Keep Alive Ref Manager. And this is the response time over threads. 
on average, we have 37 of milliseconds of response time at around 85 threads. This is a transaction throughput over threads. Uh, on average, we have 1,700 of uh, seconds of transaction, of transaction per second of around 90 threads. This is the fair over. So the fair over of keep a light rate manager, uh, surprisingly, from it happened from six seconds on our cloud until maximum nine seconds. So the fair over time happened less than 10 seconds. And uh, I think that we also use Oracle on our cloud and the Oracle fair over of keep a, uh, similar like this a little bit slowlier. But then it means that Postgres tie is red. That uh, if we can get a fair over tie less than uh, we do a test like this, per minute, we send 120 update statement nonstop per minute to the database cluster of Keep Alive Rep Manager. And then we do the failover happen. OK, now we set the optimization here, keep a light red manager fail over less than nine seconds. So the application, the user continue to use the software, no error at all. No warning, no error. Because if the fail over time less than 30 seconds, the application in Python, the Django, will not detect the changing of database master. So it passed. So uh, then it means that on our first image, we got very slow fail over, and then the application uh, in one minute returned 120 errors with 120 auto updates we test. So we had to twin the config until the fair over reached around less than nine seconds. And then we have no errors on any fair over. So you see when the keep alive detect that the master failed, the CPU of the master reached to 37%. It means keep alive run a notify down. Then the host standby, it detects that in the cluster now there is no master. So it reached CPU here around uh, 29. And then the second percentage of CPU of the host standby is around 18%. This is the rep manager promote inside the notify master of the keep alive on host standby. So after the second one, this is the promotion of the host standby, 18% of CPU. So now we come to the second cluster. Our new cluster has a proxy PG pulser. The throughput is still from around 1,000, but it reached to only 2,300 on the test. Then the first test we are doing is, is it load balancing happen? So we use Sistar. We use Sistar, and this is Ubuntu uh, 30 and Ubuntu uh, uh, 14, version 14. Then we measure that at the same time, when read sending to uh, the database, there are 1,100 read requests on the master. 1,900 risks on the host standby and 800 risks on the ISIN standby. So load balancing is, is, is sure. It happened right away in front of us. So that means that our setting is right. So this is the load balancing. Now we get into the transaction, the throughput of the HSA proxy PG pulser. This is the front end CPU U6 that only the HSA proxy one receive request from the uh, application because there is no data on the front end. So